As a prolific country music legend once said, If you tell my heart, my ache could break your heart, he might blow up and kill this man. Now, a little known fact is that Billy Ray was suffering an acute attack of myocarditis at the time. Yeah. Mind blown, right? By the way, the whole he might blow up and kill this man part? That's a direct reference to the risk of progressing to dilated cardiomyopathy. You know, when the heart's all blown up. At that point, you're well on your way to heart failure and cardiogenic shock. But this kind of heartbreak is a pretty common occurrence for the patrons of the Flaming Heart Bar. And you know what? That sign in the back perfectly depicts everything we're about to cover. Myocarditis is a heterogeneous group of disorders that cause inflammatory damage to the myocardium. In other words, something, whether it's a virus or toxin or drug hypersensitivity reaction, is causing immune cells to enter the myocardium and set off a chain reaction of inflammation. Neutrophils, lymphocytes, macrophages, yeah, they all show up. In the United States, the most common cause of myocarditis, by far, is some kind of acute viral infection. And the classic example involves Coxsackie virus B. Who can forget that cute little Coxsackie cockatoo from Sketchy Micro? Hmm, classic. Remember how it's always paired with that dilated sack of birdseed? Before it reaches the stage of overt dilated cardiomyopathy, however, a few processes have to occur first. As she grabs onto that virus-evoking handle for the tap, I want you to imagine immediate damage initiated by the virus itself. This is before the cellular immune response, before your body even notices you have an infection. So myocytes are already being destroyed by direct viral toxicity, perforin-mediated cell lysis, and cytokine expression. And then your body knows something is up. Send in the immune cells. In this scene, the bar counter is supposed to evoke an image of the myocardium. And those little invading blue seeds meant for the Coxsackie cockatoo up there depict the characteristic little blue nuclei of the cellular infiltrate seen on histology. Now, this whole time, the damage continues. T cells and NK cells remove virus-infected cells. Macrophages clean up cellular debris. The whole shebang. This is the itis of myocarditis. And it's kind of like your own body is damaging the myocardium at this point. An immune response is directed against virally infected cells, destroying them. This initial immune phase is also helpful for containing further spread of the virus, however. And most of the time, the virus is effectively cleared, and the patient only experiences a brief, self-limiting myocarditis. In some patients, though, myocarditis persists. This is because the viral damage to myocytes causes the release of cross-reactive self-antigens that confuse T-cells. And before you know it, an adverse autoimmune response is directed against these autoantigens, which includes proteins like cardiac myosin. Just think of this jar of IgG-evoking toothpicks here, toppled over onto the myocardial bar counter. These autoantibodies cause further inflammation, necrosis, and even fibrosis of heart tissue. Overall, just remember that viral myocarditis involves both direct viral injury to myocytes as well as further inflammation caused by your own body's immune response. And though Coxsackie virus is the classic example, numerous other viruses have been implicated, including adenovirus, HIV, parvovirus, and herpes simplex 6, 